Hey, how's it going YouTube? Today I wanted to talk about prepping your car for triple digits, hot weather. I live out here in Vegas, lived in Arizona and Florida, so everywhere I lived was hot. Been working on cars my whole life, been ASC certified for five years, been in the industry for 15 years, and always been a backyard mechanic. So we're gonna go through each fluid, what you should be prepping for, if you already know all about this, you're probably wasting your time watching the video. But for those who want to know, I'm going to go under the hood when I'm done talking about the fluids. So first for triple digits, when it gets hot in your area, you want to change the oil and the filter. Your oil is not only a lubricator, but it's also a cooler. So if you have dirty oil and a dirty filter and it hits triple digits, you're running all that dirty oil, which is a slower flow rate because that's what these numbers mean on your oil. That's the flow rate of what it's supposed to be doing. So if you have variable valve timing or one of these difficult engines that every car has today, if you don't have the proper flow rate, that's when you'll start burning oil, damaging rings, damaging your head gasket. So you need clean oil and filter right when your triple digits start or your hot weather. 95 through 99 is still considered very hot. Your next thing you want to check when the car is cold on flat ground is your coolant level. So every car has a color. This one's the pink one. So if you have green, pink, blue, orange, whatever it is, you want to top it off at the same color. Don't mix colors. If you can't afford antifreeze or don't feel like buying it, the next option would be distilled water. Just to top off. You don't want to fill your whole system with water. But if you top off with distilled water, it will prevent an overheating. Next thing you want to do is pop your hood. And on your radiator or radiator, however you say it, you'll see the fins there. You can take a garden hose and spray downwards to get all the dirt, debris, and sticks out. Because when you drive, the wind is what cools down the coolant and they have fans that you also want to make sure that are working. One way to test your fans is turn your AC on max. The fan should be spinning when the AC is on. If you have a second fan that kicks on when it needs to. Another preventive maintenance is washer fluid. If you ever owned a car and got a washer fluid tank leak, it's because your tank was dry it got brittle and cracked, so if you keep it full with washer fluid, your tank won't crack. Next thing you want to check is your power steering. Your power steering is a hydraulic fluid that makes it work. If it's low on fluid, it's also a coolant. So if you don't want to burn out your power steering pump in triple digits, make sure you're checking your power steering Power steering goes low because if you ever felt your power steering hose, power steering fluid is very powerful fluid and it's, it's what's called seeping. It goes through the pores of the hose is why you always have the liquid and it's very dirty. If you ever grabbed your hose, your hand would be solid black and it has this oozy liquid on it. That's because it oozes out of the line. So don't burn out your power steering pump. Also your transmission fluid. Your transmission fluid is just like your engine. The transmission fluid makes your gears work, all the, the stuff keeps it cool. If you ever look inside a transmission, it's like a Rolex watch. So you want to make sure that that fluid is full. If it's not pink, you have a couple options to do a drain and fill or a flush. Depending on your mileage, if you ever did a flush, that's how you'll know if you just do a drain and fill or a complete flush. <clears throat> now. Most cars, you can use transmission fluid for power steering and transmission. You cannot put power steering in a transmission. You can check your owner's manual for that. Most of them will tell you to use power steering. It says you avoid the warranty, but it's all the same stuff. Lastly, you want to look at your air filter. Because if your air filter is dirty when it's hot out, you're not getting proper airflow. Your car works off air-fuel mixture. If you start seeing black smoke, it could be a dirty air filter. And if you follow the tube to the air filter to the engine, you'll see the intake. It just unscrews one screw. You can spray some of this in there and clean out your intake after you change your air filter. Another thing you want to do is check your AC 
Freon, which you can buy one of those kits over the counter. It shows you the low line. You can't go off of it 100%, but it'll be close. So if you have a low charge, you can go ahead and fill that up. Let me grab that. All right, so if everybody's seen these AC recharge kits, AC systems have a high and a low, but this strictly goes to the low and you can see white, green, yellow, and red. So if you hook this up and it goes in the uh, yellow or red, that means you have another problem besides your Freon. If it's low, that's when you can go ahead and give it a quick charge. They're all 134. If you have an R12 car, you need to watch a video how to convert it. But me, I check mine every year and I only had to squeeze the trigger once or twice and it changes the performance very well. Last thing we're gonna talk about is your fuel tank. When it's triple digits, summer, whatever hot is to you, you wanna keep your car at a half a tank. I know that sucks to hear when gas is five and six dollars a gallon, but there's this thing called a fuel pump inside your gas tank. If you run on low all the time, say you're always on a quarter tank to empty and that's when you keep it, you have a high chance of burning up your fuel pump. And that'll be about four to five hundred dollars to drop the gas tank, get the fuel pump out, put the new fuel pump in, and put the gas tank back up. So with labor and parts, that's a four to five hundred dollar job. So fill it up when it hits the half mark, fill it up again. Do not go below half in triple digits. Alright, let me put you guys on pause and let's go open the hood. Alright, welcome back. So your oil fill is here, tells you the weight oil you need. If your car takes synthetic, always put synthetic in. This is your coolant. Mine right here says min and max. Make sure you're on a level ground and it has to be stone cold. Washer fluid. These are the fans. Oop. These are the fans I was talking about. They're in the front of your radiator. And once you open your hood, if you see your radiator, you can hose it down. Or you can hose it down here. Mine's kind of sealed. This is the air filter. This is the tube at the end here. Take this off and that's where that throttle body cleaner is. And then if you find your AC system, you'll have a, a low and a high. I can't see the camera. So this is the high right here. I believe mine's not marked, but you should have a high and a low. Anyway, the AC lines are both right here off the radiator. Well, I hope that helps some people. Let me know what I missed. Thanks.